Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is how to check a refrigerant charge on an outdoor condensing unit. All right, so what we're looking at is checking the refrigerant charge if you have a TXV or if you have a piston. All right, you could also have just a capillary tube as well instead of a piston, which is a smaller line than one of these distributor lines right here. All right. Uh, so I've done these individually on different videos. I want to do both of them at the same time, you know, just to kind of show you um, on one video here. All right. So uh, presently it is roughly about 80 degrees outside. Okay. We have a temp sensor just in the air right now. I'm going to take that off. And first things first, we'll say we have a, a TXV at the uh, evaporator. Okay. So we have a TXV at the evaporator up on the rating plate right above this. It actually says that we have a TXV subcooling that's a target subcooling of 10 degrees. Okay, so what we do is we have a temp sensor on the liquid line. And we're going to put that into put that into our multimeter. All right, and then we see we have 77 and a half degrees on our liquid line. All right, presently this is 410A refrigerant that's actually in this unit. All right, and on the high side we have 279 PSIG, okay? So, uh, for 10A, when checking with subcooling, if you have a TXV, then what you need to do is you need to check it on the high side, all right? So you have a temp sensor on your liquid line, you check what your pressure is, you follow your pressure into the pink ring. The pink ring is for 410A or 410A, refrigerant and it tells you the saturated temperature and that tells you basically the temperature of the refrigerant right in the middle of this condenser coil right here all right so it says if you follow that 279 psig in it's roughly right about 90 degrees right here okay 90 degrees saturated so we take 90 minus the actual temperature it's a temperature decrease in liquid form from here to here all right, and we find that we have 90 minus 78.4, and we find that we have a 11 and a half degrees of subcool. All right, the system's calling for 10 up at the rating plate, so it's just slightly overcharged at 11 and a half uh, subcooling, 11 and a half degrees of subcooling, and that is okay as long as you're within plus or minus three degrees. All right, so if the actual subcooling that we got, if if it was this say we had 90 degrees saturated right here which is actually right here on the condenser coil and say we had say 60 degrees here all right that would actually be 30 degree temp difference all right and a 30 degree temp difference between in the middle of the condenser coil and here that would be a 30 degree subcooling all right that means that you have too much refrigerant inside all right if you had 90 degrees here and we only had 85 degrees and that means you only have five degrees of subcooling. And that means that we need to add refrigerant. And when you add refrigerant, your pressure and temperature goes up and your actual temperature on your liquid line goes down. Okay. That's if you have a TXV. Now, if we're checking for superheat because we're checking it on the vapor side and we have a piston as a metering device, this will be the front of the evaporator coil. And you would see this little nut right here. Inside, there's a piston. All right, or you have a capillary tube. Basically, you don't see a TXV and you don't see this. It's just a small little tube that's a little smaller than this. Just one, you know, the one main one inside. That means that that is a capillary tube system. In that case, you need to check superheat, and superheat is checked on the vapor side, and you need a superheat charging chart. Okay, I check the wet bulb inside. You check the wet bulb with a psychrometer, either a sling psychrometer or a digital psychrometer actually inside the building at the closest return for this system we're reading 60 degrees wet bulb okay i'm outside right now with this psychrometer just to show you uh and we read 69 degrees but just so you know this is actually sitting right by the closest return and it's at 60 degrees wet bulb i just brought it out just to show you all right the outside temp when we started i was telling you it's 80 degrees all right, so what we have is we have 60 degrees wet bulb. We bring it down to 80, okay, and we're going to connect those lines. 
and we're going to come up with an eight degree superheat. So 80 degrees outside temp. Make sure your temp probe's out of the sun. Make sure it's down low because the air sucks in this coil down low and then it blows at the top. So you want it out of the sun, down low temperature, right where it's sucking into the condenser coil. So that's 80 degrees and a 60 degree wet bulb inside at the closest return. We have eight degrees as a target for superheat because we have a piston. So that's the charging process for a piston. Okay, regardless of whether it's a piston or a TXV, you have to basically wait until it's right around 70 degrees outside and there's a load on the building in order to start and check an air conditioning system. All right, so here we go. So we have our temp sensor already electrical taped onto our suction line. I'm gonna change this temp probe out that was on the liquid line and I'm gonna use the temp probe that's taped onto the suction line. All right, so we're just saying this hypothetical. This system actually has a TXV on it, but we're just saying if it did have a piston instead of a TXV, we would need to check in superheat. We're going to need our pressure on the low side gauge converted to temperature, okay? And we're also going to need the temperature of the actual line. The actual line should be higher. This temperature should be higher than the saturated temperature here, okay? And that's your superheat. It's your actual temperature minus your saturated temperature. All right, so we have a target of eight degrees of superheat is what we should have. Let's check our pressure. And our pressure is 111 PSIG. We follow that in and we're looking at, it looks like 37 degrees saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator coil. All right, from the middle of the evaporator coil until it comes all the way out here, that's your total superheat. And what we have out here is 50, uh, 51 and a half. All right. So 37 and 51 and a half. So what you're looking at is 14 and a half degrees of superheat. Okay. So if we have 14 and a half degrees of superheat and we're calling for eight as a target, uh, then we actually need to add refrigerant. If our superheat is too high, then we need to add refrigerant and our superheat will lower. Basically what's going to happen is when we add refrigerant, this pressure and temperature will go up a little bit and this actual temperature will go down so it will meet in the middle all right so you want to get your superheat as close as possible to the target superheat and your superheat will change from day to day it's not that you set it at a certain superheat and that's it and you walk away all right you need to use a superheat charging chart like this you know or use a superheat calculator of some sort but you need to find the wet bulb temp inside. You need to check that every five minutes in case it reduces because as you check and charge an air conditioning system, your wet bulb temperature will actually go down, changing your superheat, all right, your target superheat. So in this case, we would need to add refrigerant, okay? Now say our target is eight, okay? And we have 37 degrees as a saturated 410A, temperature, all right, say we have 37 there, and we have 41 here. That means that we only have a four degree superheat, and that means we're overcharged, all right? You don't want to be way overcharged with superheat because what that'll mean is on certain days when, you're, when your wet bulb is real low in the house, you could actually have liquid coming back to the compressor again, and you need some superheat. You need to make sure that this uh, refrigerant gas has some type of superheat when it goes into the compressor. Otherwise, it could change back into a liquid and sludge the vapor compressor. All right. So it's about efficiency and it's about uh, making sure you have a, a safe, long lasting compressor. All right. So that's how you do it. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.